Uh, now this question is for Harry. The amend mm -hmm. the amend 2012 campaign seeks a new constitutional amendment which overturns the Citizens United Supreme Court ruling by stating that only people are people. 24 states already have laws that prohibit corporations from making independent expenditures from their general treasury. Do you think it necessary for people to fight for constitutional amendments every time the Supreme Court makes an unpopular decision? No, I think you just get the 28th Amendment passed and that you never have to worry about the Supreme Court ever again. They will make recommendations to the majority. They will not, five men and women will not dictate to 300 million people what the laws shall be. It, it, that will only be determined by the majority of citizens. They will be in charge and those people back in the Congress will be our servants or they'll be out of there. We're going to run the Congress like the United States Navy instead of the prostitution house it is now. And we all know it. There isn't anybody that doesn't know that our government's bought and sold. The only question is why do we tolerate it? And Article 5 of our Constitution says we don't have to. We, the citizens, have the power to bypass the Congress, to pass that amendment, and once you do that, every major issue will change profoundly. Okay, JL, you have one minute to respond. Wow. Um, <clears throat> well, um, sorry, Harry, but uh, I, I do believe that our republic must stand. And remember, my, my terminology for the republic is the Bill of Rights. Our Bill it's of Rights. bribery. It's all it is. That's what right. do you think republic means, John? Our Bill of Rights. That's what I'm referring no, to. No, it means, no, that's not what it means. It, That's that what I'm Bill of Rights, it, let me explain what republic means from the dictionary. It means representative government. It means when you vote for someone, you give away all of your political power to that person you just voted for, and they go off to Congress to get bribed in secret by lobbyists. Okay. That's republic. So, so we know, we know that that is a problem. Uh, I do still want to hear JL's response because what you're saying Harry is to no longer use the Supreme Court as the highest court in the land you're saying that the majority of the people are the highest court in the land and I understand absolutely. that completely absolutely now I want to hear JL's side of it okay. well, uh, under no circumstances would the Bill of Rights be infringed upon they're infringed upon now because of the lobbyists the corporations the corrupt uh, Congress, politicians, and all their unelected aides, the agencies that really have no bearing on um, what really runs the American people's lives. And uh, in fact, nothing runs the American people's lives as long as we don't infringe upon each other's Bill of Rights. And technically, we can't do that except for in civil court, because um, that's the law. That's the way the law works. Um, the government can infringe upon our civil rights, of course, unlawfully, and that's what needs to end, and I believe that's what Harry is saying needs to end, yet somehow, I'm assuming his perception is that people can vote away your rights by being in mass, like a massive amount of voting. I, it sounds like zombie apocalypse. Um, well, thanks, Harry. The, the, okay, I'll, I'll get to this question of the Supreme Court later, but actually, no, I'll ask now because it really is a perfect segue. Um, do you feel that, the, in your opinion, and I'm going to ask JL first, has the Supreme Court failed in their duty to uphold the original spirit of the Constitution? Um. Give examples. <laughs> Uh, on many cases they have, yet their rulings are pretty, you know, cut and dry. This is how they perceive the uh, Constitution. Uh, Roe v. Wade, for example, that's a hot issue. If you're aware of uh, the ruling on Roe v. Wade, that, that has to do with the uh, right to privacy. Everyone has a right to privacy. Um, yet the courts limit the lawyers who are actually wards of the court from being able to argue that from the opposite viewpoint. Um, so Roe v. Wade is actually a ruling for the child. 
I mean, if, if you look at it from a legal aspect, it's a ruling for the child, not for, um, you know, someone that wants to uh, end the life of the child. Um, so the uh, Supreme Court has failed in part, yet for the most part, they're pretty much on cue. However, the justices that have been voted in and approved, in many cases, are, have been approved through fraud. So that could technically nullify quite a few of them. Okay. And um, go ahead, um, Harry, do you want to give us a one-minute rebuttal to that question? Has the Supreme Court failed us in upholding the, the original spirit of the Constitution? Well, I suppose that depends on what you mean by spirit, Judy. Uh, I, I, the, remember, our initial Constitution didn't allow women to vote at all. <laughs> or the whole, they, they very much discriminated against them and anybody they call people of color. Uh, so which part of this Constitution I think most people liked was that it was better than a monarchy, that we, to some extent, had some representation compared to a monarchy. Uh, the trouble is we now have an oligarchy. That's what a republic is, a tiny number of people who make decisions in secret with lobbyists. That's the way it's always worked. It's based on bribery. So it's the question done. is... Do you think that the Supreme Court uh, has a reasonable, uh, updated Constitution to now uphold? I think the Supreme Court and the judicial system and the legal system in this country operates just as much under bribery as the Congress does. You talk about going to court. Well, you better have a lot of money if you want to have any kind of a chance of dealing with anyone. And it, we have a system where rich people rule. That's why they don't pay any income taxes. You know, what the tax rate was when Eisenhower was president was 90 percent. But the rich people and their lobbyists, and by the way, when that rate was 90 percent, Judy, we had one of the most prosperous economic periods in our entire country's history in the 1950s. 90 percent for what percentage of the population? For the upper 1 percent. Okay, so jail... Over 90%. Okay. For so, both Eisenhower and Kennedy. Okay, so, uh, JL, we're still, we only have 30 seconds for this, but um, it sounds to me like Harry saying that the, um, that the Supreme Court really is just an advisory panel in his administration. Um, how do you see the Supreme Court now, since they have. Uh, supposedly until their death they can maintain that position. Uh, what is your your um, take on the Supreme Court? Well, the Supreme Court was put in place for a reason. Um, in my opinion, the reason has been perverted. Otherwise, you would not have uh, various presidents choosing certain Supreme Court justices over others simply to fit the bill for their, uh, their outlook on what's right and what's wrong. I know that sounds like I'm talking around the facts, but, you know, liberal or conservative Supreme Court justices, none of that should make a difference. It should deal only with constitutional. I guess that's it. Harry, you have 30 seconds. The Supreme Court, everything it does serves the interests of the super rich. That's why they had the Citizens United thing. There's a lot of super rich billionaires to come in and influence elections. It's so obvious what's going on. It's the largest transfer of wealth from the middle class to the super rich in the history of mankind. And only if the American people, the majority of citizens, if we don't get control of this government, nothing's going to change. And there's right now millions of people starving and in terrible conditions, many of them children, because the Supreme Court doesn't care about them. And either does our government, and certainly the corporations don't. Okay. They're just left to suffer, and that's because the, the real people okay. aren't, have no power. That's the problem. Okay.